Thank you very much. Mr Farage, now, on behalf of the FDD group. Thank you. Well, I can see that you're all very upset here this afternoon, and I have no doubt that the events in the USA over the last few weeks have been a very profound shock to you. Perhaps you're right. You see, what has happened here is somebody has stood on a manifesto for election, got into office, and within one week said that he will hold faith with his own electorate. It is called genuine democracy. Unlike the system we have in the European Union, where the unelected commissioners like Morgherini here have the sole right to propose legislation. So I'm sure that it's a great shock to you to see that a genuinely elected Democrat is doing what he was put in to do. Um, and it must be, it must be, um, I would think today in Washington. Sorry. I can't hear you, mate. Di questo Parlamento e delle funzioni istituzionali this Parliament has uh, institutional functions, as does, does the Commission, out of institutional respect to the Commission, but also as a result of, of the Commission as President. Right. Uh, we need to be right. So, uh, thank you. And out of institutional respect, President, to the truth, perhaps you will understand and agree with me that within the European form of lawmaking, it is the unelected Commission that have the sole right to propose legislation. If I'm wrong in saying that, you can throw me out of this parliament right here, right now, this afternoon. Honorable Farage, I would like to just a little bit more respect. I am just asking Grazie. you to be a little bit more respectful, please. Prego, Thank you. You, can, you may continue. Oh, I'll be respectful, all right. And perhaps you will be too, for the right of the leader of a political party that won the European elections in the United Kingdom in 2014. Now, it seems to me that actually, with all the anti-Trump rhetoric that is coming from everywhere, actually what we're hearing is the true nature of the European project, which is genuine anti-Americanism. Trump is motivated by protecting the United States of America from Islamic terrorism, whereas what has happened in this room and in governments around Europe is you have welcomed these people into your own homes. But can we please, just for a moment, look at the facts? Amongst all the hyperbole and the hysteria, all that Donald Trump has done is taken seven countries that were identified by President Obama as posing a risk to the USA. Obama already had put in place extreme vetting. What Trump has done is for 90 days to say, let's examine that vetting and see whether it's good enough. But I want to ask you, Mr. Verhofstadt, and all the others, with your faux outrage today, where were you when Obama in 2011 banned any Iraqi from going into the country for six months? Why do I hear no criticism in this chamber or from the Commission of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain and others who refuse to take a single, not one, refugee or displaced person from Syria. And how can it be, how can it be that on Holocaust Day, last Friday, not a single one of you criticised the 16 countries in the world that ban Israeli Jews from even going to their country on holiday? What is this hypocrisy? So perhaps what we need to do, Mr. President, and through you to the members, perhaps what we need to do is to be a little bit more constructive. All of us here say we're Democrats. Well, here's a chance to prove it. Let us invite President Trump to come here to this European Parliament. I'm sure as Democrats you'd all agree that what we need to do is to have an open dialogue with the newly elected most powerful man in the world. And if you throw that rejection back in my face, then you prove yourself to be the anti-democratic zealots that I always thought you were. Could we have a microphone for the speaker? Thank you, Mr.